G'day everyone, Ben the Spider Seeker here with another spider profile. Today we're looking at one of the most iconic Australian spiders, Latrodectus hasselti, the red-backed spider. This spider is easily one of the most recognisable spiders around, thanks to the bright red marking along its back. In adults, the black coloration may fade slightly to a dark brown when they get towards molting. The male does look a bit different though. Typically with large palps, that's the male's sexual organs on either side of the fangs. They also lack the bright red and black coloration of the female, but they do still have that hourglass shape on their underside. Visible in this image, courtesy of She's Got Legs Spider and Insect Photography, linked in the description. The males are also not considered dangerous, especially when compared to the females. The juveniles look a bit different too. They do usually still have that red marking, but lack the solid black coloration of the adult females, often having lighter coloured markings, or white stripes as they get towards adulthood. The very young ones sometimes lack the typical obvious marking, though that hourglass shape on the underside is still visible. It may not be as bright, as is the case with this very young spider, still living in the web with its mother. In Australia, there's only one native species of widow spider. That's the common name given to the Latrodectus genus. And that spider is Latrodectus hasselti, the redback. The egg sacs of the redback spider form round balls suspended in their web. There are often multiple egg sacs in the web, though many of the juveniles will not reach adulthood due to predation or the use of insecticides around the home as they move around. In terms of their habitat, redback spiders are basically found Australia-wide, building relatively large webs, filling any gaps wherever they can find them. Their webs are very fine, and will generally have a pile of discarded leftovers from prey visible below. The spider will also usually be visible somewhere in the web, but will retreat into a sheltered area if disturbed, as this one has. Relocation of redback spiders can sometimes be difficult because of how and where they build their webs. Most of the time it's also not necessary, given that they rarely leave their web, and once you know where they are, you can probably just avoid putting your hand in there. The Ridiidae spiders, which is the cobweb weavers the family redbacks belong to, they often build the same style of webs, and they have a similar first line of defence, which is to retreat to a shelter, or to drop from the web. The suggested method of relocation if these spiders are in an inconvenient area is to place the container below the web, not too far as they can die from the fall. Then you can try and get a stick between the spider and its shelter. From there you can attempt to wrap up the entire web along with the spider using that stick. This way the spider may end up on the stick, in which case you put the stick in the container and move the spider. Or the spider will drop into the container, making the job easier still. This spider has built its web around a frequently used tap. The web is now also full of babies. Sometimes relocations don't go completely smoothly, as the spider may be a little more difficult, moving around the web and climbing on things like the tap here. This one has been difficult, but persistence pays off in the end. Continue trying to get the spider on the stick and or into the container. Throughout the entire process, it's important to take care of where you're putting the stick, moving slowly and gently so as not to harm the spider. They're not a particularly fast spider, so if you're patient and careful, you can generally get them where you want them to be. When you're releasing them, be sure to release them in a sheltered area with plenty of support structures to build their new web. This will encourage them to stay where you've released them and not to wander back to somewhere that's less convenient. Finding reliable information on the risk to pets posed by these spiders is sometimes difficult, though it seems dogs may be in a similar situation to humans, requiring multiple bites or other contributing factors to have a strong reaction. Cats do, however, seem to have a stronger reaction to the venom anyway. As always, if your pet is bitten by anything and you're not sure, I'd strongly recommend contacting a vet. So are these spiders deadly to humans or not? The symptoms of a redback spider bite can vary quite a bit between people, just like most spiders. 
The main symptoms reported though are pain radiating up the limb from the bite site, accompanied by sweating starting within about 10 minutes. How dangerous this spider is considered depends on how you evaluate the risk. Officially this spider is considered potentially dangerous to children, pregnant women or people with a compromised immunity. Regardless of this, it is still recommended to seek medical attention pretty soon after a bite, just in case of complications. It's also worth keeping in mind that some factors may affect how the venom influences the body, including alcohol or any other substance like medication, which can influence the chemicals within the body. If you look at the risk of a bite, it's actually relatively low, since these spiders usually build their webs in low traffic areas and out of the way. They are not likely to wander across people either. Their first defence is also to retreat or drop from the web and flee, or just curl up into a ball. Redbacks are also not particularly prone to biting either, meaning it takes a fair bit of provocation for them to actually bite. Though they will bite if something is disturbing them in their webs for a while which is how most bites occur, accidentally reaching through their web. If we look at a historical comparison though, there have been a total of 13 deaths caused by funnel web spiders before the antivenine became available for them in 1981, with no deaths since. The redback spider though has been implicated in about 15 deaths prior to the creation of an antivenine in the mid 50s, though this is rarely the sole contributing factor. There has also been a recent death in 2016 which occurred following treatment in hospital. This indicates that there were possibly other factors in play in that case. The reason for having a slightly higher number of fatalities attributed to the redback when compared to the more venomous funnel webs is most likely down to redbacks having a much wider range and much higher likelihood of regular contact with humans. Essentially if you have a shed or a wood pile and you live in Australia, you're quite likely to have come across a few of these. Now to the danger rating, this time not accounting for the male spiders which are not considered dangerous. The venom has scored a 7 out of 10. Not considered anywhere near as venomous as funnel webs, but still medically significant. The bite can cause a fair bit of pain and discomfort, and you should probably seek medical attention if you are bitten. Defensiveness, only 3 out of 10. They basically stay in their webs and will only really react defensively if they're directly disturbed. The risk of contact though is a solid 10 out of 10. If you have a shed, wood pile or shelter available to these spiders, they'll most likely make use of it. The distance to help is 8 out of 10. Given the wide range of these spiders, it can take a lot longer to get to help from some of the more remote areas around Australia. Overall, this spider scored 7 out of 10. They're amazingly adaptable to adverse conditions, and if you're bitten, localised symptoms like pain around the bite can be treated with ice while you're making your way towards medical aid. Overall, redback spiders are an impressive spider, which can take care of a lot of pests for you if you can manage to live with them around the house. Thanks for watching, I've been Ben the Spider Seeker, and you've been great. See you next time.